This video tutorial will illustrate some of the features of paid Prometheus 0.1.99 releases. I'll begin by clicking on next here and uh, clicking on load. This brings up the browser. I'm going to pick the genome from Lily Mendel. Click on next. At this point the little spinner begins. It shows me it's a 23andMe formatted file. What file name is there? And then it's going to count off how many genotypes are in there. And we can see that number there of about uh, 570,000. We advance and choose an ethnicity. I'll stick with uh, Caucasian here. Decide where to store your results and what name to give the main file that's produced. A number of other image files will be produced at the same time and so they all end up in that directory. And now I'll advance, click on payment, and launch the web browser to uh, take me off to make the payment at Amazon.com. If you've already made payments in the past through uh, Amazon.com for books or other things, that same account is here and you can just log in with that. You're going to see that you're for sort of a, a virtual good and it shows it's a Prometheus report. Clicking on confirm advances that. And now in the background, uh, the Prometheus uh, 0.1.99 recognizes the payment has been made and uh, begins to transfer a large file to you. We're going to say next and just choose everything. Now we're going to add a second report. This report instead is from the Greg Mendel genome. And um, we, with the F1 reports, we can do a couple different comparisons between these two genomes. And so now I'll click next. And then one more time to begin the analysis. Um, this is going to take about uh, maybe five minutes or less for the core of the functionality that you've seen with other Prometheus runs, just producing the HTML report. But we're also going to be generating some images this time. That takes a little bit longer. And so I'm going to pause this. And then now we're back. And there's just a few moments more to go. It's taken about um, perhaps five minutes or so. Um, and there's a countdown happening. In fact, there was one just prior to this also counting down to number uh, 57. 57 is because there was about 570,000 SNPs in that, uh, that first file that we loaded. And um, close to the moment now. Okay, and at this point, um, Prometheus has again launched your web browser and is opening up the HTML file that shows the full Prometheus report. I'm going to move this window just a bit out of the way. We can spend more time looking at the web browser instead. And uh, close a couple of tabs that we don't need anymore as well. So here we are looking at the Lily Mendel uh, Prometheus report. Most of the sections are familiar, but there's a couple that are new to you, perhaps. Uh, the first one here is the, labeled, this tag cloud tries to highlight notable terms. Clicking on that shows sort of a bolded so, uh, collection of text to show you it's important. It also says that this um, tab-separated version of your file should be easily opened with Excel. Somebody had mentioned on the Prometheus talk page in the Snipedia wiki that they'd like uh, tab-delimited or comma-separated values they could work with in other tools, and that's now there in this version of the report. But perhaps the most interesting is the F1 report. Down here you'll see a number of magnitude. If I click on more and expand this, you're able to see uh, a comparison of the Lily and Greg Mendel genomes and uh, a Venn diagram of how they overlap. And now some of the characteristics that are possible, not in necessarily a single individual that they're going to uh, produce as children, but across all of the children they could produce, there's uh, an absolute certainty apparently regarding their status at the RS179999 uh, SNP um, because they both are also contributing a, a T genotype that's it's similar to themselves. Um, but there's, there's more genotypes here as well, uh, some in which the probability is not so certain because they have more heterozygosity, um, different things could be produced. Um scroll just a bit more. The rest of this then is a fairly traditional Prometheus report, but now you're looking at a probability on each of these genotypes of it, of it turning up in a, the population of offspring. And there's a second box to be expanded, and this one's the, uh, the images that we were generating. And this is now not thinking about if you were to uh, produce offspring between these two, but instead if you were to just compare the two genomes and look for similarities between them. This is a, a largely a, a, an image of two shades of green and red, and the red here is telling us that there's differences sprinkled between these genomes, places where these two people are, are clearly not related.
And I'd like to then pull up a, a second report. Uh, this is from a grandmother who we have uh, the, the data for the grandmother, her son, the son's wife, and the daughter that they have produced. So now, because of all the different family relationships, it's possible to see uh, certain things that were not visible with that, that first image. So I'll scroll down here to the very bottom. And you'll see uh, magnitudes for each one of these. It's highlighting what sorts of things could turn up. The first one we see here uh, is comparison, the, uh, comparison of the grandmother to herself. And as a result, the images you're going to see are just solid, bright green. Everything is an identical match. Um, the next thing we're going to see when we scroll down is the comparison of the grandmother to her son. And now, because it's a, a parent-child relationship, there's no red in that image. Um, one or two little thoughts are possible due to, you know, genotyping questions, etc. But by and large, it's two shades of green. Bright green for perfect match, darker green for a half-identical match. Uh, still s evidence of relatedness. Um, you'll notice on the X chromosome, it's a different look due to the son only having one X chromosome, the, the grandmother having uh, uh, two. And then expanding now the relationship between the grandmother and her daughter-in-law. Again, a sprinkling of red. There's no strong family relatedness here. Now the last one then is the most interesting. Down here by looking at the uh, grandmother to her granddaughter, you'll instead see sections of the chromosome which only have the characteristic of uh, two shades of green, where there's uh, a strong relatedness to the grandmother's genomic line. And then regions with red where instead it's coming more from the, uh, her, the, the daughter's mother, and therefore there's a sprinkling of red throughout it. And you're seeing two images as well. Uh, the first image is of a particular chromosome, in fact they're, they're both of a similar chromosome, but it's been laid out in a sort of blocky pattern. The one below is more of a traditional rectangle, and the rectangle reads just from the upper left corner, reading across the page, and then it comes down one line and it snakes back. And this, this sort of snaking process is a very simple way to just lay out the genome, so rather than being one infinitely long line, we have instead uh, a block that fits on screen. Now the, the square above will begin to see some similarities where there's clusters of red between them. There's similarity to images because the other image is also laying out the genome, but it's doing it in a different way. And you can see the patterns of where the inheritance has happened. Now by clicking on finished back in the Prometheus window, we're going to stop focusing on the Prometheus report and start focusing on a new piece, the Prometheus uh, data browser, I guess you could call it. And here you're looking at an XY scatter plot in that lower left corner where you can, uh, you can zoom in and, and pan around and really get a feel for your data. Along the y-axis, it's labeled from 0 to 100, and those are the population frequencies according to HapMap. So if something is in the, uh, the region of 100, it's very common in your ethnic group. If something is closer to 0, it's more rare. Down here in this lower left corner are things that are even below 0 because we just don't have any information on what the population frequency is. I'm going to select them, click Delete, and remove them, and you'll see that the histograms all update. Doing the same thing again here for this larger block. For them, there is no magnitude assigned, but we do have population frequency. The ones at the bottom of this square are more rare to you and perhaps more interesting and should be more, more quickly uh, get your attention. But in this case, we're going to click delete and get rid of these as well. And now I can uh, take the magnifying glass, put a uh, rubber band around this region of data and then zoom in on it. And now with the histogram you'll see that uh, still the vast majority of genotypes have magnitude zero assigned. And then by clicking on one of the genotypes in the upper right hand corner, uh, a couple of red circles show up indicating the genotypes. Future releases of Prometheus will probably do uh, quite a bit more with all of this. But I think it's ready for you to get a first taste of the data browser.